Hello, so uh, today I have a short video for you about uh, shop humidity. Uh, this is something that honestly I didn't really think about uh, un until uh, pretty recently. A couple of weeks ago I started to, uh, to, I don't know why, but I started to worry about that. Uh, of course, wood is, uh, is by nature very uh, impacted by humidity in, a, in, the, in this environment. So uh, I started to, to measure my shop uh, to see what was the humidity because uh, if you don't know, I'm located uh, in Canada and uh, up here it gets pretty cold in the winter. And the past few weeks we had uh, minus 30-ish degrees Celsius uh, about every night so it was really really cold so of course I have to to keep my shop warm so I'm using some uh, I can actually show you up here uh, this is what keeps my shop uh, cold during the winter so this thing uh, is a electric heater so it just blows uh, very hot and dry hair down uh, in the shop uh, and of course it really really impacts the relative humidity of the shop so I started worrying about that since uh, like I said wood is pretty uh, uh, impacted by humidity and of course guitars too which I'm building right now uh, because in particular the body of the guitar is made of really thin pieces of wood so uh, a low humidity can, can have uh, some impact and of course uh, when I started to check my guitars I uh, noticed that uh, the top of my guitars, of course, were uh, beginning to, to fall a little bit. So this is uh, one of the first signs of guitar getting too dry. So this is why I started worrying about that. And uh, then I got this, uh, first this little uh, tester right here. Oh, it's actually here. Uh, this little, uh, this is pretty cheap one for the hardware from the hardware store, which monitors both the temperature and the humidity. Uh, I'm aware that this might not be uh, exceptionally accurate, but I, I guess it's good enough. So, uh, and like you can see right now, it's 50, so it's uh, even a little high because I've been uh, doing many tests in the, the last few days. Uh, so uh, maybe three or four years back, uh, weeks back, I started uh, thinking about that. So the first thing I did, of course, was to bring uh, this uh, house humidifier in here. Uh, this is a unit that we've been using in the house uh, when the kids were babies uh, to to make sure that the humidity was was uh, was okay because my daughter had some uh, respiratory problems and uh, we should uh, actually be, still be using using that in the house because uh, it gets pretty dry in the house too. But it was uh, this device that I used to uh, to make my my shop uh, at the correct humidity level. Like you can see, uh, uh, from what I could gather, uh, humidity in a, in a wood shop or a guitar wood shop at least should be around 45% degree, uh, percent humidity. So uh, this was my target. But I noticed pretty quickly that uh, this thing over there uh, uses water at a pretty uh, uh, fast pace. So I had to start uh, coming in the shop a couple of times a day to just fill up this uh, the, the, this uh, this container, so this is something that uh, got pretty annoying annoying pretty fast. So I started to think about how could I uh, automate this process. So my first thought was to uh, actually hook the the container of the unifier to um, to the uh, to the water system in the house. I, I actually have a a little sink right here, so I already have water. And you can already see right here that I did hook a hose. Uh, it's it's uh, connected to the to of course the 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 cold water pipe running down below. So uh, I hooked this up, and my first thought was to hook this up to this container, but it wasn't really uh, possible, or I I would have to have uh, to made a lot of modifications. So I came up with. Uh, another solution that I, I found online, of course, was it was to make my own humidifier. Okay, so here is my uh, homemade humidifier. Uh, the first part is actually this bucket right here, which is a pretty standard bucket that I got from my local hardware store, uh, which I just uh, modified and put a couple of components in there. The first thing that I did was put this little uh, valve here, which is uh, totally optional. It's just a way of emptying the bucket without having to remove it from this its stand. I will show you in a couple of minutes. And um, uh, the first thing that I needed was a way of for this bucket to uh, to fill itself uh, whenever the, the the water level would drop below a certain 
certain level. So uh, I decided to use this thing here, I don't know if you can see, which is uh, pretty simple. It's actually just a, a toilet uh, fill valve. Uh, I figured that since about every house, at least here in North America, uses uh, this type of uh, pretty simple uh, fill valve uh, in the toilet in the house. So uh, this device was pretty uh, already tested and should not be a problem. So I just installed this toilet fill valve in the bottom of my bucket right here. Uh, again, this just uh, from the local hardware store. Uh, the other thing that I did is uh, put this little plastic uh, thing around the valve so that uh, this uh, this thing that hacks as the the float for the valve could uh, could move freely even with my uh, mist fogger here that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and the other thing that I did was to add this uh, this little pipe here, uh, actually a pretty large pipe. This is a washing machine pipe. Uh, that I use and will just hack as a way of uh, prevent the bucket from uh, ever getting uh, the, the level would not get too high uh, if these valves ever get to to fail so if it ever fails I will show you in a minute the, 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 the water level will raise up until it gets into this pipe and it will empty itself in my uh, shop sink so uh, that's about it for for the bucket uh, on the lid of the bucket, uh, I needed some uh, kind of a chimney. Uh, I came out with the, with this little duct that I got again from the hardware store. Uh, I just uh, fixed it to the to the, the lid of the of the bucket, uh, and I use I also have this uh, little fan, which is actually just a, a PC fan uh, hooked up to this uh, thing here. This thing again is optional. I just wanted a way to have the fan. Uh, to uh, be able to use it at uh, any variable speed. So uh, you could buy some variable uh, speed controller for PC fans, but I just made one out of uh, a few parts that I had uh, here and uh, an Arduino actually in the back. So uh, just, I will post, I will put in the description of this video a little, uh, how to make this thing, but it's pretty easy actually, just basic stuff. So uh, again, instead of just, uh, plugging the fan directly into the this uh, little AC uh, transformer uh, fan is using 12 volts I just plug this uh, 12 volts into this uh, this little box here which goes through the Arduino which uh, controls the speed of the of the fan using this uh, this little uh, switch here so that's it for because I need a way of uh, pushing hair into the bucket so that the the mist that gets in there would be released through the chimney. So I again, I will show you all of that uh, in a moment. And the last, but the, the most important part for this humidifier was to actually get uh, a mist maker uh, because there are uh, two kinds of, a, of way to, to make uh, humidity, which is actually uh, the more traditional way, like the one I've shown you earlier, which is just uh, using some kind of a filter which acts as a as a, let's say a wick to the water because water gets uh, sucked up by the filter and then you just blow a fan through this filter which just shoots the water particles into the air. Uh, this is the most traditional way. Uh, this is uh, what they call ultrasonic uh, humidifier. Uh, this little device right here uh, at its core it has a little uh, it's actually like that. I got three spares when I bought this device. It's just a little ceramic disc that can uh, that vibrates very 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 rapidly uh, when it's given some current. So this device actually just a way of putting some uh, voltage through this ceramic plate, uh, which will vibrate at like 1.3 gigahertz or some megahertz or something like that. And uh, in return, when it vibrates, uh, you put this into the water, and when it vibrates, it just makes the water uh, vibrate. Uh, really really fast and make some mist out of it so this is how you uh, you make a, a humidifier you'll think, uh, using an ultrasonic uh, mist maker and uh, this right here is actually uh, some kind of a float that came with it you actually have to put the the, the device into the this unit which in the, 
in turns just floats in the water and ensures that the, the device is always at the right depth in the water because for that to work it needs to be about uh, three centimeters uh, deep in the water so this is supposed to keep the device at the more or less the, the right height but turns out that this thing i don't know why but it just uh, the the bottom of this thing is removable and anyway i, I couldn't get that to work so uh, a little earlier and by the way this is from a company called house of hydro they sell this kind of device they actually sell this is the, the smaller one that they sell they sell a, a lot of others with uh, more disc incorporated into the, the just one unit which makes a lot more mist and uh, this one is really really efficient like you will see uh, i first bought a really cheap one from amazon this was this one uh, the disc is a little smaller and it didn't, doesn't produce uh, anywhere near the same amount of mist as this one so i highly recommend getting uh, stuff for also bro or i at least getting one with a, a 20 millimeter uh, ceramic disc uh, i don't know if it's just the disc or the, the, the device itself but this one was highly recommended online and turned out to work really 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 better than this cheaper one and since this one didn't uh, come with any kind of float like that i did 3d print one uh, that i found on thingiverse which happened to to be just the right size and i actually using this one for my uh, house of hydro device because this float that came with it is uh, not really good so uh, enough talking let me show you how this device works okay so the bucket is up uh, on its little shelf here uh, so let me just turn the water on and see what happens. So when I turn that, the valve actually uh, gets water and it's going to fill the bucket. And I will show you in a second. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the, the valve is now at the, the, the set level. So the water stopped. Uh, this right here, like I said, if I want to empty the bucket, I can just open this valve and it happens to be just over my sink. Uh, and if for whatever reason at some point uh, the valve would happen to be stuck or stop functioning uh, and the water would keep rising up until it reaches this pipe here which was has act as a, some kind of a, of a safety drain. So as you can see, water goes up and now it goes through this pipe and into my sink. So if for whatever reason, uh, I'll just release that, uh, this, uh, this thing goes wrong uh, during the night or while I'm not in the shop for a, for a long while, it will just continue to fill and go into the drain so I won't get any uh, water uh, on the floor or anywhere around my wood. Okay, now water is back at the, is, uh, the normal level, which is uh, about 10 liters. Uh, and if it ever falls to around nine or nine and a half liters, the valve would go on, it will auto fill. And now the mist maker is in there. As you can see, this little uh, white thing just allows it to float and it's about at the, the right depth. And if I go on and plug this thing, see what happens. Here we go. So it just, uh, like I explained earlier, uh, vibrate this little ceramic uh, disc and make some mist. So now I put the lid back on. So if we just peek in there uh, and I get this thing running again, you'll see that it start making mist. And if I put the lid back and just turn on the fan, you will see that. I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually going out through the chimney. There's a lot of it right now because it did accumulate for a few seconds, but Hans, once it's running, uh, it actually goes out at a pretty decent rate, which I'm not sure you can see in the camera, but uh, I can assure you that we can see it locally. And I can uh, adjust the, the rate of the, this thing going out by adjusting the, the speed of the fan. So there you have it, my fully automated shop humidifier. Uh, this thing will uh, work, uh, fill itself automatically when the, when the water goes down. Like I said, this, the, the mist maker that I have is supposed to be rated at about uh, half a liter per hour. So uh, if I, I have my reading correctly, it should turn the water on more or less uh, once every hour, hour and a half. 
And anyway, I don't have to worry about that. So last but not least is uh, how will I control this thing? Because I don't want to let it uh, run all the time and have to turn it on and off myself. So the last part is actually to automate this thing. And the key to that is this little device right here. Uh, this is Xiaomi Zigbee uh, Temp and Humidity uh, uh, device that goes with my uh, home automation system. So this right here is actually uh, wireless. It works through Zigbee protocol. Uh, and I have a, a Zigbee controller in there in my in the house, and this has been there anyway for a long time, and allows me to to know the temperature and the, the humidity in the shop uh, in my home automation system. So I have that hooked up, and uh, in addition to having my humidifier uh, hooked up to this here, which is just a, a, a just a smart plug, so I have both the, the the mist maker and the fan connected to this smart plug. And uh, again, this smart plug is controlled by my, uh, my house home automation system. So uh, with the, the humidity sensor and the smart plug, I'm able to do some pretty simple automation which allows me to turn on the, the humidifier, whichever the humidity in the shop gets below, let's say 42, and uh, turn it off when the humidity gets uh, above 48. So uh, in this, uh, this way, I, I will ensure that I get about 45-ish uh humidity level in the shop uh 24 7. so so that's it here you have it my homemade fully automated uh shop humidifier uh, again i will put some links in the description to uh, parts and how to's that i use to to make this thing so if you ever want to make uh, one yourself you should have all you need so that's it thank you and see you next time